Here's what happened last time on The Encourageable Party. Shortly before arriving at Port Heracleon, during the disposal of the dead overboard, Shaft and Shakara briefly quarrel over what to do with Danzig. Shaft insisting that his brother receives a proper burial and ceremony once in Heracleon. They arrive at the port to witness a fatal accident amidst the myriad of crews loading and unloading the many docked vessels. A large crate falls and crushes a dock worker, spilling its contents to reveal it to be full of metallic cobra parts. Alstoff Tinnerman, the gnomish tinkerer, oversees this crew, irate at the delay in loading the boat. Much to the surprise of the surrounding loading crew and party, the crushed dock worker morphs and changes to reveal him to be a deep scion, making it clear that more than just Brendel have infiltrated the shores of Heracleon. After much debate, the party splits up. Shakara and Mia escort the captured cultist from the Rising Three to the nearest guard station, where they are convincing enough for their prisoner to be taken into custody by the port's guard force. With their names and the name of the ship on which they arrived, Recorded by the guard, the ladies continue into Heracleon seeking a library. Meanwhile, Shaft and Falzerin visit the creepy aura with the hopes of purchasing some magical items, a trade that is restricted to a black market in Heracleon. Taking the wizard under his wing, Shaft slyly draws the attention of the inn's bartender, who points them towards the restroom to meet the seller of the goods. Now, let's get back to the adventure. As you walk in, it is it seems to just be a normal bathroom. There are uh, urinals and, and stalls here. And you step in and, and, the, and the bathroom door closes behind you. A figure comes out from one of the stalls. And it is a dwarf. You see he's, he's clad in uh, a, a robe of his own. And he's got this big red beard that reaches down to his belly, his kind of rotund belly. Say, come, come. I heard the bell, please. I am Tenchi. I hear you're in the market. I look back at the door. Is there kind of a lock on it or anything? Yeah, absolutely. I flip the lock and I say, uh, hey, well met, Tenchi. Uh, what you got? Well, well, please. Come on, come. And he beckons like back towards the stall. You see him step into the stall you know briefly out of out of your view and you kind of hear the 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 rumble of, of stone kind of grinding against each other okay I sort of look around the room real quick do I see anything that looks uh, out of place I'm I'm actually looking to see if there's anybody that's gonna maybe jump out of a secret door or somebody I've had experiences like this before where things go really wrong so I just want to yeah, I just want to check and make sure that everything looks on the up. Sure, roll of perception. Oh, natural 20. So, plus 3, 23. Everything seems to look in order, you know, kind of ducking down. You don't see any other legs under under any other stalls or anything like that, right? <laughs> There's yeah. nobody else in here using the facilities. So, well, hey, are you, are you coming? Yeah, I'll look at Falls and go, hey, hey it's, it seems good. And I walk on. I, I follow. And as you hit the opening of the stall and it comes into view, you see that the stone slab in which this toilet is, is resting on, more of like a, a porta potty, right, more than anything else. It's moved back into a section of this wall that has opened up and to reveal a set of stairs leading down. He's, he's already kind of halfway down as he, you know, motions again. Please, uh, my, I have my wares down here. You have to keep things safe around here. I'll follow. <laughs> I like you it. with me, Bill? Yeah, you I'm coming. Do an insight before you fall. <laughs> not, not, not Why yet. would he start now? So. <laughs> oh. yeah, we don't do insight. <laughs> I'm learning to now that I've got a plus seven to insight. <laughs> and falls in as you are barely clearing the, you know, your head barely clears the opening of the secret passage as it closes behind you from uh, Tenchi pulling on, on a torch at the bottom of it and seals up back and he, you know, he takes, pulls this torch and lights it and leads you down this, it's a fairly short corridor as kind of based on the 
size of the creepy aura itself, it it seems like this would still be contained even within that framework, you know, that footprint of, of the inn. And just kind of leads you into this uh, small stone chamber. And there's a, kind of a desk against one wall and seems to have a bunch of, of wares on it. And you see uh, also on that desk there's vials of what look like ink and uh, various jars filled with, with you know, uh, crafting ingredients. Well, uh, I'm so glad you could come patron my, my wares here. Uh, I'm afraid stock is a little limited. I don't have much to offer, but it is grand stuff. So I'll, I'll say to Falzern, hey, this is your area. This stuff look legit. Can I make a check to um, see if I recognize anything, or, or and if I do, if it seems authentic? Yeah, you can make an arcana check. It's a 14. From what you see, uh, without actually handling anything, it is difficult to tell if you know it actually is magic. But on the, uh, in addition to the rest of what I described on this desk, there seems to be a, a small a handheld mirror, kind of with this this pearl uh, handle on it. There's a small leather bag, a little pouch sitting on top of it, a, a larger bag as well. And there's also what looks like uh, needles on this table. They're kind of tucked into this uh, unfurled roll of, of leather again. I'll say to, say to Falzrin, hey, can you tell if this stuff is uh, really magic or we might be taken for a ride? I'm whispering this to him. I don't have any any extra special means by which to tell if this is authentic or not, other than just looking at it and comparing it to things that I've seen in the past. So so I'll, I'll walk over to the guy and go and pick up the bag and go, uh, hey, what's this do? Oh, well, that's a bag of holding. Quite simple. Very common. And as you, you pick it up you and you kind of, you know, looking at Falzerin's, it does look like it is a little different as Falzerin's bag. It seems to have kind of this colored, you know, a bag of holding, which we've never described before. It has what looks like almost a face in some of its patterns in this flap that kind of overlaps. And it's quite a large bag as well, but this one it actually it has that same face, but actually has a mouth. Hey, so how's it work? Oh, well, much like your friends here, you put items in and store. Pull them out when needed. Yeah, well, how much? Oh, I could let that go for maybe 650. Wow. That's uh well, I wouldn't I wouldn't purchase it unless I see it work. Uh, you know, put your hand in there and let me see, or put some stuff in there and let me see how it works. Well, I'm afraid if you'd like me to put one of my items in, you could, you'd have to buy it first. Oh, it doesn't, I mean, we got something around here that it probably isn't a, is there a rock or something? It, yeah, you want to scrounge up a pile of dirt or something? Yeah, I'd put some stuff in my hand and you go, so you put stuff in the bag and you can put a whole bunch of it. That's what his does. I throw it in there. Okay, and it goes in the bag. I go, okay, now what? Well, now you've stored it in this bag. Okay, I turn the bag over and sort of shake it. The the handful of dirt you dropped in there is it sprinkles out of it as you upturn this bag. Okay. I'll look at the... There's another bag there, right? There's a smaller leather pouch. Okay, I pick that up. Does it look like his bag? It's a, it's a, it's, it's literally like it fits in the palm of your hand. What's this one do? Oh well, that's that's just a simple bag of beans. Uh, that doesn't sound very magical. Well, the bag itself, no, but the beans, ah, you can plant them, and I will admit the magic is a little random, but once planted, a, a wondrous effect may occur. How, how much? How much is this one? Oh, as you see, there's only three or four beans in there. It's not not too pricey. Two fifty. Two fifty. Well, that's a lot more in the range of uh, available money that I have. Falzrin, you interested in either one of these two things? Well, uh, I already have a very capable bag. I was hoping you, you wouldn't happen to have any spell scrolls around, perhaps. Uh, uh, as a wizard, I'm always eager to learn more magic no I'm uh, I'm afraid I, I don't deal in scrolls but 
Have you ever... Kind of looks you up and down. You ever been interested in a, getting a tattoo? Tattoo? I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm quite the type. And he kind of explains that... He can basically give you a tattoo that allows you to summon a creature that will be friendly for you for a, a time. A, a new berry? Tattoo berry? <laughs> a new berry? I smile. I smile and go, he wants a tattoo. Um, so what? what is this creature? It's essentially like a familiar or a, an animal companion. So whatever the creature inked, it will summon that creature. And uh, the, the summon creature lasts for 10 minutes, understands and obeys the tattoo bearer's commands, and is, of course, friendly to them. Do you want a Kraken tattoo? Because I think you want a Kraken tattoo. I, I'm pretty sure that... <laughs> The uh, creature rating for a Kraken is a bit higher than what this guy can tattoo. Higher than what you can afford. There you go. Can I communicate with this creature at all? It listens to you. Can it... um, I guess uh, what I'm wondering is, am I able to see what it sees, or can it communicate back to me No, no, nothing like that. No, no. It's literally like you have a a pet that obeys you, like a dog that... You say, sit, it'll sit. Like, it'll follow your orders for 10 minutes. Hmm. I would be interested in that if I could use it for scouting purposes, but if it can't communicate to me. Come on, you're a squishy Protection. wizard. You don't want something yeah. to fight for you? Yeah. Be like a shield. It's probably not going to be very... Um, it's probably not going to be able to take much of a hit, though, I would think. I don't know. Listen, just because Bill doesn't like tattoos doesn't mean Falzerin wouldn't get one. I offer a wide range of beasts in which... I can apply. I, I will say, once summoned, they are only a one-time use, as is reflected in their in their price. Wait, I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it if I get to choose what animal it is. So get lots of tats, dude. You could get as many as you can afford, quite frankly. That's. I I must admit that's interesting. I I can't say I've ever actually heard of such a thing. Right across your neck. T- tell me more about about these items here on. The, that I see on the table. What are these these needle-looking things? Well, they're, of course, in which I, I used to apply the tattoos. Ah, I see. Okay. Of course, the ingredients that pertain to the specific tattoo I can apply. But if you're not interested in the tattoo, that's quite all right. He holds up, picks up the mirror, and says, Well, the only other thing I really have to offer is this mirror of metamorphosis. And he explains that this this mirror has five charges total, cannot be recharged. The mirror's wielder can change into an image that has been captured by the mirror as per the polymorph spell ruling. So it lasts an hour. To capture an image, the mirror must reflect the entity in which it's capturing for an uninterrupted ten minutes as though casting a ritual. So it's a little tricky to capture an image, but once captured... It can you can mimic whatever you have captured. Okay. Shaft, uh, this this seems like something that's tailor made for you. I mean, that's really cool. But you said it takes ten minutes of somebody looking into this mirror to make them sort of be captured in it. Yes, somebody, something. Ah, it's a long time. I will also say there is no distinction. Uh. Not to assume anything about you two, but there is no distinction whether or not the captured entity must be alive or dead. How much? Well, again, this is one of my finest items. This one will also run you 650 gold pieces. Yeah, see, you're, you're, you're outside of my range is the problem here. The bag is... It's cool. I know what it does. I mean, it's it's just like his. The, uh, the beans seem a little... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm getting for the for the money. This thing seems cool, but 650. I mean, can you do a little better on and how much were the tattoos? Well, again, the price varies depending on the beast depicted. So, he he goes through his list and basically from least expensive to most expensive, he lit, rattles off a giant badger, a swarm of ravens, a giant seahorse, a giant wasp, a giant eagle, a giant vulture, polar bear, saber toothed tiger, a giant scorpion, a killer whale, a giant shark, or a giant crocodile. 
Oh, wow. And the price ranges from the cheapest, the giant badger and the swarm ravens are 25 gold pieces for one of those tattoos. And to the the most expensive, the giant shark and a, the giant crocodile are, would be 600 gold pieces each. And basically the, the difference in price reflects the uh, increase in the challenge rating of those beasts. So for those that may be familiar with how the challenge rating works, a giant shark and a giant crocodile's challenge rating is five. Falsy here. Uh, you know, we got to go back to the mainland. Giant shark's not a bad idea, but it's pretty pricey. Yeah. I mean, I'll split the cost with you if I get to put it on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it could be helpful against this kraken. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm not saying on the forehead. Uh, I I I think I'd like to be discreet about this shaft. Uh, I don't I don't want to be advertising Tramp stamp. this tattoo. <laughs> yeah, lower perhaps back. perhaps somewhere that that my shirt would cover, like the lower back, or yeah, I I'm all for that, really. <laughs> yes. Well, I will tell you, I don't apply anywhere from the waist to the knees. <laughs> okay. I think that's only fair. I want a badger in memory of Barry Aww. right here on the arm. Now, can, can I pick up this bag of holding just because I know Shaft is interested in it and, and I know how mine works. I've used it quite a bit now. I want to inspect it and see if I think Dude, it's... Dude, it's, it's, it's 650. I'll pick up another one for 500 back on the mainland. This guy's gouging me. Okay. Fair well. enough. <laughs> but, uh, hey... Nothing against you. I know you got to make money. It's, hey, it's a profit. I get it. Uh, yes, I will say the, the prices may be inflated a little bit from what you'll find on the mainland, but there's there's a price for having to deal in Heraklion itself. I'll give you 400 I could possibly let it go for 450 Eh. I'd, I'd rather see a shark on his uh, a tramp stamp for a shark. I don't have that kind of cash on me. A tramp stamp? What's that, Chef? It's what you put on uh, right above... Well... Let's just say it's in your lower back. Okay, I, I think Falsey would be would be interested in having a massive shark that could attack this kraken. That's, how much did you say that was? The giant shark is 600 gold pieces. Isn't the plan still to not fight the kraken ourselves, but have the Well, this is protection. Oh, I, wait, I'm not talking to you. Here's 300 <laughs> gold pieces. Here's 300 gold pieces, an additional 25... I want a I want a badger right here on my uh, on my biceps. Okay, so each of these tattoos uh, will take one hour to apply. Okay. So you you see Tenchi he starting with with the giant shark. He pulls a specific vial uh, and you know dumps its contents into kind of this this mortar and pestle and takes some of the ink and mixes it in as he squishes it and and. As he mixes these two contents, he starts to, you know, dip these needles, which he pulls out of this leather, uh, unfurled leather satchel here, and starts to. Where did so you? Where do you want this tattoo, Falzer? <laughs> uh, on my lower back, where it's covered up by my shirt, very tactfully. And he, he applies a, a <laughs> of this tattoo, and it is painful as he applies this to your lower back. Kind of right around the spine. He maybe he jabs a little too deep a couple of times. But after an hour of him kind of mixing this together and applying this tattoo, you you have this this giant shark now on your body. It's it's gorgeous. I I you can't see it, but I tell you, it's gorgeous. And yeah, shaft. As you look at it, it actually is. Uh, it does actually look quite intricate. It's not just like, you know, a squiggle of a, a, yeah, it might be a shark or something. I don't know. But it actually does look like like what it is, what he's sold. not a prison tattoo, right? Exactly. exactly. (laughs) And he begins the process again with with the giant badger ingredients. And and another hour passes and he applies that to your arm shaft. Can can you write Barry underneath of it? (laughs) How about about just just a B? Okay, I I, I can do B for you. You've been good customers so far. Cool. Okay, I paid the guy my three twenty-five. Okay. Which is uh, half of his and and twenty-five for Barry. All right, I marked that off. So now I'm 
I'm hurting for cash, but not really. Uh, are you sure those are the only? That's all you all you'd like. I mean, unfortunately, I, I do only have the in, in specific ingredients to apply one of each of these, but there is a myriad of beasts you can choose from. I, I do quite enjoy the, the craft, I, I must say. I may have missed my proper calling. You know, I think a giant wasp would would be a nice thing to have around if, if someone's causing us trouble. Maybe I'll I'll take one of those as well. I, I'm I'm impressed with your work so far. Where are you putting it? I think I look over and see where Shaft got his tattoo and think, ah, oh, that that looks looks like a pretty cool spot to have a tattoo. I, can, I kind of wish I had if not put the first one on my lower back. <laughs> That's the problem with tattoos is regrets, am I right? Regrets. Regrets get you every time. Well, don't, don't you worry. Once you use it, it won't be there any longer. I sure hope so. I mean, hell, I'm getting into this. Let's do the ravens on my other arm. <laughs> it's another 25. <laughs> Out of money, you said. What did you say the wasp was? The wasp was 50. So again, he starts with the wasp and he grabs a, another one of these vials and he dumps what looks like a bunch of uh, like insect parts. You know, there's the uh, a black and yellow abdomen and, and some what look like antennae that he grinds up in some ink again and applies this to, to Falzern. And the raven ingredients, you know, there are some shredded feather parts and what looks like a beak that he kind of grinds and pulverizes, again, mixing with this ink doing the, the the quick incantation over it as he applies applies these uh, ravens to shaft and now four hours have passed <laughs> that you've been with this guy <laughs> oh boy you know shaft as much as I like these tattoos and Tenshi I, I, you've done wonderful work but we've got friends that are, are probably wondering where we are we, we probably should get going unless there's anything else you want shaft uh, no, my arms are hurting, and I'm. I need a drink. Okay. Well, you, you know what to tell you. I, I've enjoyed my time. You've let me practice my 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 craft here. How about on the house? He reach pulls out that leather pouch and reaches in and pulls out a single bean and holds it out to you. Have some fun for the curious. I I will admit, but they can be quite a delight. All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say it's all on you, buddy. So to, to activate it, you just plant it in dirt or sand and water it, and then a minute later, it sprouts an unknown effect. I like it. That's right up your alley. Yeah. So, Shaft, um, I don't know, what do you say? Should we go meet up with Mia and Shakara? Uh, they're going to the library, right? Yeah. I mean, what time of day would it be? Are we getting close to nighttime, or do you still it have some daytime? It is closer to evening now, now after this this four-hour marathon of tattoos. Hey, if it's, uh, if it's all the same to you, I'll just stay here and have a few drinks at the, uh, the Creepy Ore. Okay. I guess um, I can probably do some reading, and, and hopefully me and Shakara are, are interested in spending a bit more time in the library. That way, when you're done here, you can come meet us, uh, because I don't I don't think you'd be able to find my place. It's, it's not... It, it's pretty modest. Is the library pretty easy to find? It is. You, you can't miss it. The center of town, it's a, a huge building. Does it say library on it? No, it, it doesn't, but there's nothing else around it that you'd mistake it for. All right. Sounds good to me. I'll, I'll find it. Okay. Don't be too late. I need to get some rest tonight and level up. <laughs> <laughs> So Shakara and Mia, you are, you're, you know, rewind four hours, climbing the <laughs> elevated path to Heraklion itself. You immediately see it's, it's, it's large, it's looming like 20 foot tall curved stone walls that demark the city's limits. Uh, you approach a, an intricately constructed metal gate and it too has kind of elegantly curved features to its design. And once through the gates, again, they don't seem to be manned by any type of, of guard that patrols or anything like that. Uh, they are open. You see that the, the city, it continues to ascend with the landscape of, of the island. And from your 
position at, at the gate, which would be the lowest point of the city, you can you can see it in its entirety before you as each row and cluster of building it sits higher than the ones in front of it, so you kind of get this this you know like uh like rows in a theater right like of the seats the kind of lines where right. you can see take it all in at once, and very clearly this this city it's divided into sections, different styles of architecture marking the the haphazard boundaries for each i mean obviously you the two of you don't know it's uh the significance of it but falzern would know and of course for those listening um that each of these different styles it's kind of this loose physical representation of, of the varying schools of magic that are studied here and in the middle of the the city is this much larger it's massive stone building uh, that matches one that you can see far in the in the northwestern corner of this walled-in city. Both buildings looking like it's like this large, almost like a, a, a castle's keep, basically. Very clearly prominent in this city. Does it say library on the front or what? Well, it's in the middle of the city. Regardless of it had writing on it, you're not close enough to read it. But that, I mean, the guard gave us directions to the library, so we'll follow his directions we'll just keep walking yeah yeah and again um just because of the way the city is constructed no matter where you are really you you can see buildings higher up on this plateau and you able to weave your way through um the city and the different kind of styles of architecture and they're like everybody here like looks like stereotypical wizard basically right like there are no people in full clad armor sets like the two of you are and you we're just standing out yeah. you very much stand out as you not like you don't get looks of disdain or anything like that but like yeah you're, you're drawing an eye the eye as you pass as we clank down the street can exactly you, can you imagine the dragonborn with an asimar at least i've got my amulet on <laughs> <laughs> do i see any other dragonborns you see races of all kind yes you do see some robe clad dragonborns uh, there are many elves and uh, dwarves, uh, the odd tabaxi kind of kicking about. It is a very diverse city. It's basically anybody with the drive to pursue arcane knowledge would know to show up here. So it does draw in all walks of life. I'll just like nod at people as we pass and kind of do little waves. Yeah, we're just being friendly. Yeah. Yeah, we're just being friendly. There's nothing to fear here kind of vibe. Yeah. And you make it to the library, which now that you are up there, you see that it just has a sign that just says Knowledge Center on it. Very, very plain to the point. So you are each looking for a particular tidbit of information here, or what exactly are you here to seek? Yeah, I think I would look over to Shakar and say, like, what are you interested in studying? Well, I believe it would be quite helpful if we found information on the Kraken. Yeah, I mean, that makes total sense. If you want to look into that, I have something I kind of want to look into at the same time, you know. I want to look into, uh, have you ever heard of the Niyogi? What is a Niyogi? Well, my story with the Niyogis, you know, I ran into them over a year ago, and I've I've spent the last year looking into them and trying to figure out what exactly they're doing in Aspara, but they're like this eight-legged spider eely kind of creature. Oh, yes! Yes! I have fought them. I do not like them. I don't either, but I... It took me a while to kind of figure out exactly... I still don't know what they're doing in Aspara. You know what I mean? But they're not... They're up to something not good. So as much as I can know... The more I know, the better. I agree. They seem to be in the mountains, but mayhaps branching out. That's why I ended up in Pisces. I was, I've been looking after the Neogi for over a year now. So that's, I mean, the Kraken is definitely an immediate concern, and it's why we're together. Um, but I really want to look into this Neogi. All right, you see what info you can find on the Neogi, and I shall look for Kraken. All right. So we'll split up and start wandering. Okay, I thought we would just go to a lib go li- go to a librarian together. 
there is certainly someone at a desk that can point you in the, the direction of what you may be looking for. Um, basically, they they send you to like a, it's I guess for lack of a better term it would be like a lore section, right? I mean, you you're looking at this into this legendary creature of the Kraken and. Do you ask about the Neogi by name, or what, do, what does Mia ask for exactly? Um, I would first try using the name, because they gave me their name. But I would also maybe look into other planets. And I would like describe the creature as well, and see if anything sounded familiar to them. Yeah, the description does not, or the name does not ring a bell. They look kind of very confused at your description and when you speak of other worlds they kind of oh oh yeah sure yeah yeah the the planar section is is just down that row there you can i'm sure you'll find what what you're looking for there so that might be difficult to find but i would at least try to start okay so if the planar section is and it's very like nondescript at this point i would maybe go to lore with shikara and look at kraken stuff and then just keep that in mind because i think It'll take a lot more searching. I might want her help. Okay. Double double team it. Sure, sure. And it would kind of like this this study montage as you you know you're you're because you don't know exactly what you look for, but then there's this 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 library is huge. There there's like four stories of stacks and rows of books in this knowledge center. It is an enormous place. And it is a ton to filter through. Okay. But, like, how big is the lore section? There are, like, dozens of tomes in each of these sections. Like, there's hundreds of thousands of books in this building to, to go through. Are they alphabetical? <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, no way of finding the exact book we need? Like, this is stupid there's four hours in which you guys can spend in here looking, right? And it's not like, oh, okay, I pull a single volume. It's more like you, you know, grabbing a stack of maybe related books and leafing through for pertinent information. You know what I mean? Like, like there's there's so many different aspects to what you're looking into that all of it couldn't possibly be contained in a single volume. And especially with the Niyogi, which getting the confused look, like if, if you're trying to find stuff on that also maybe in this lore section, that, of course, would take some digging through as well. But as far as the Kraken goes, a very well-known legendary beast, you do find this large, thick tome, this book, that does contain some information on it. It seems to be very generalized, but leafing through it and, and reading through it, you discover that once it's once fully grown, like Krakens, they're an incredibly intelligent creature. And though they cannot speak, they, they, they know and understand a, a number of languages and also develop this telepathic abilities in which to communicate. They're, they're this, this primordial force of, of just utter destruction and they harbor this deep-seated hatred for civilizations and, and achievements from land-dwelling civilizations. And getting into a bit of, of their, their history, you discover that Krakens were, were once said to have been servants of the gods themselves and soldiers for, for their whims and the, and the causes that the gods may see fit to use them in and, until they, they broke free of this bondage and to, to never be used as a, as, a, as a tool themselves again. You mm. don't find any information or references to what would be what we're calling a juvenile Kraken though as most of the information pertains to a fully grown entity. Is the name Krayla Kina ever mentioned? No, not specifically. You do f- kind of put together that most likely, which is referenced quite a bit, is like a Kraken's lair. And most likely this, this Kraken will try to seek a lair for itself. And there's, there's, you know, there's a list of a myriad effects in of which a, a fully... Uh, employed Kraken layer imparts onto the surrounding area. So you you both can na- now know you gain this knowledge of being able to recognize the signs should you be looking for and trying to discover its layer. So you mar- you can mark that on your character sheet just to remember that you you've now gained this knowledge. 
Shakara, it sounds like Krakens used to be slaves for the gods, and I mean, Kralakina was summoned to be a weapon for someone else. Maybe this intelligence that they have, like, maybe they can be reasoned with. It also says they are destruction. I don't know that it would side with us. Maybe not, but I mean, we should remember that they don't want to be anyone's slave, and this Kraken was summoned to be slaves for, I mean, it seems that way. I still do not believe we could just let it be. I do not think it would allow us. I shall see if I can find some more books. And I want to kick everybody off mic. I will go back to the librarian and ask if there is a section on old ones. Uh, specifically, I say, Do you have any books about a serpent mother? Does Dendar sound familiar? She kind of looks around and in a quiet voice, even more of a whisper than you would normally find in a library. We, uh, I'm afraid we don't have any books on that type of magic. Do you have any knowledge you could impart? I, I'm afraid I can't share anything with you. Uh, it's frowned upon here. There's a very strict sense of magic in which we study here, and that's not part of it. I would possibly keep this to yourself. Thank you. And I'll go try and find a section in the library about something that would might be help, and I'll just, like, wander around looking for something that I might be able to find. Like, in what kind of, like, a, what, again, this place is very, very large. Do you have, like, a, a generalization, maybe, in which you might want to look under? Is there a restricted section? Do you ask the librarian? I say, um, is there a place where I might find some information? I, again, not not in Heraklion. In the, the public places in Heraklion, I, I have heard rumors. Uh, as many people come in here, and I, despite their whispers, I, I do overhear. I do believe that a few of the elders, they... They're not quite as strict in the traditions of Heraklion as as Alamar is. So mayhap some elders may have be of assistance to me. They are elders for a reason. They may have more knowledge that they've learned themselves that aren't available to the rest of the, the studies, the people studying in, in Heraklion, any volumes that I try to get into the Knowledge Center itself must be approved by Alamar, and very rarely does something of this ilk make it through. Is there a particular elder that may be more likely to have the knowledge I seek? Yes, I... Her, her name is Geneva Vansk. She's... She's been sympathetic to my plight in in the past as anybody all anybody wishes here is 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 to learn and I believe that cutting out a section of magics, whether or not they be arcane or, or, or some other means, I th believe it's foolhardy to not understand what the natural world and the beings that live in it can provide. So this serpent mother is a natural being of the world? I I have limited knowledge on myself, but before coming to Heraklion, I, I have read a, a bit of, of these these old ones, as you put it, and they are not a force to be trifled with. I do not have a choice now. I have certainly heard that they can impart great power to those that do indulge. For what means, I could not say. Thank you. You have been most helpful. Of course, and, and again, I 
should you speak with Geneva, please do not mention my name or, or that you've heard it from from the Knowledge Center. It could get back to Alamar. And he is judicious in the order that he keeps. I will mention nothing of your aid. Thank you. Do you have any books on deep scions? My, uh, I, I do believe that, y- yes. Uh, they are related to potentially the, the, the Kraken, which you've already spoken to me about, though. You may find something in the same section. I had not thought of it till just now, so mayhaps I missed it. Uh, of course, I mean, from from what I know, uh, they can be associated with with many great powers that find a home in in the oceans themselves. So per- perhaps tangentially related, I, I, you know, if you understand. Yes, I shall go look again. Thank you, and I will go look for a book on deep science. And so, Mia, do you want to look into some planar stuff? Yeah. So. Plane, I'm dumb. What does planar mean? Like other worlds, you're saying? So uh, there's different planes of existence, like the ethereal plane, and, the, and you are, you're on the material plane, right? Right. But when they came from a spaceship and saying another world, that means another plane? Well, you, you, Mia would know that generally planar travel is through a portal, and you can't physically move from one plane to the other, like you. You would need some type of magical travel. So you could certainly put the way the, and what the Niyogi spoke to you about that. He specifically said other worlds. He didn't mention anything about planes. Yeah, so then how, how do I get to the other worlds section? <laughs> well, starting in the planar section is certainly good. And, you, okay. you know, you do find like a, a manual of planes. And as you leaf through it, much of it you you already know of in your own studies growing up in Barrack. Okay. Consulting a, a few different volumes, it, it seems they all have very similar information. Um, you know, there are specific volumes for specific planes, which uh, you could certainly maybe grab a couple of them and leaf through. But as far as, like, there, there's nothing like astrological that is referenced if you know if you know what I mean like like there's no yeah. there's no tomes on space travel for like you know bases what right. it, what it seems to be um, or like other planets it's just all it it all just really just speaks of, of planes of existence and it, it does seem like it's not quite what you're you're looking for okay so I guess maybe I would go back to the lore section and leaf through looking specifically more for Niyogi type stuff like description their physical description but also like mind control that kind of stuff and through this study the like the the, the mind and enthralling and, and and like maybe the tattoo thing like I could look into that I don't know you discover what would be like a monster manual kind of thing right a few different volumes of course depending uh that denote specific characteristics that kind of catalog different types of beasts that share like characteristics and you you don't discover anything that matches exactly the, the description of the nyogi nor do you find any actual written mention of the word nyogi mm-hmm. but you do kind of glean a little bit more into how some of these maybe mind-altering or, or mind-enslaving effects could potentially work. As you, you certainly understand that, predictably, there, there's a, a connection between the enthraller and the enthrallee. And in order to sever that connection, ridding either end of it will suffice. And of course, to protect those enthralled, obviously targeting the person doing or or entity doing the enthralling would be ideal should you maybe be you know if mia would was concerned about well you know these these this thing is just it's a slave basically if if you're ever concerned about not wanting to murder whatever is slave despite its hostile actions towards you you kind of 
you understand this now, this this connection more than than what you've witnessed. And do you think that like after reading about it, I would feel pretty annoyed that I didn't kill, like I let the one guy get away? Why don't you roll an insight check? Thirteen. So based on that, that the experience and what you witnessed uh, in this year that you've that has passed since traveling from Barrack and your various encounters with the Neogi, you come to the conclusion that you most likely should not have let that Neogi live. And you can, again, getting a bit of the, this, this uh, insight into how mind control works that you can put together that th- these, this tattoo that you've seen mm-hmm. could d- very clearly and obviously denote someone that is under the influence of mind control or has been in the past and could still be but you don't find any additional information like really what what's up with this okay well i'm guessing at this point i see shikara still over reading something and i can come up to her absolutely she's kind of back in in the lore section and shikara you you find Basically, what amounts to kind of like an offshoot volume of, of this 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 legend, this vo- tome of legends that you which you found this Kraken uh, information, and it kind of dives more in more detail into like the the servants of these entities and what uh, historically has been documented with these these beings, and you do find a section on the Deep Scion, and it doesn't specifically reference the Kraken itself again in the text concerning the Deep Scion, but it does state that a a Scion is created through this painful transformation by a greater power, such as a Kraken. And it's done willingly. The the soul and the, the, the person in which is being transformed willingly accepts this and what is considered by many of these powers a, a blessing, a, a granting, a, saving their lives, basically as, as this kind of self-preservation in, in a moment of, of death by some type of, of watery means. Specifically, I'm looking for some kind of detection, a way to detect if someone is a great scion. Unfortunately, there's nothing like that in the, the writings. It does note, which you've already witnessed, that upon death, in their hidden form, their altered form, they revert back to their scion. Problem form. solved. We just need to go around and kill everybody. Then we'll know who's great scions, right? And you also see that their purpose is often for infiltration, to usurp or further the means of whatever power transformed them. So, did you find anything? Not much helpful. It does have some information on the Deep Scions, but really no way of detecting if someone is one. So, Deep Scions are, like, created? Yes. How are they linked to the Kraken? Krakens seem to be one of the powerful creatures that can create them, amongst others. I mean, I guess that's my question, is what other type of creatures can create a deep scion? It just says... powerful entities. Leland, would I be able to keep... Like, is there a point to keep searching, or we'll never know what other type of entities? Well, again, there's no, like, specific list in this deep scion, but if you consult the the book that had had the Kraken, uh, you also, you know, flipping through and finding, like, aquatic powerful beings you you see mention of of uh, like abolis again another type of creature that seems to have been cast from from the gods or, or some type of severance from the gods themselves another like evil and 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 vile creature that harbors like deep hatreds for for their treatment and that that kind of thing do you want to read about abolis shikara I mean, they seem to be sort of on the same stage as the Kraken. I mean, maybe we should learn in case we encounter one of them. It is best to have as much information as possible. And then, uh, I guess I start looking and trying to read about Abolus. Okay, great. 
I assume we're just going to keep reading and looking up information until Falls are in his shaft. Join us again. Right. Of course. Of course. So um, Falls are in Leaf's shaft at uh, at the tavern there, having some drinks. And on before he goes back to the li- uh, over to the library to meet Shakara and Mia, he wants to go try and drop a message for the Tritons so that he doesn't potentially miss any scout that's coming by to check that spot. And the, the, this, this location is actually not too, too far uh, from where he is. So he's going to head off uh, over towards the edge of the sea where, he, where he's gone in before and then start swimming down to this secret location that, that he has to make a drop. Yes, uh, you tra- kind of travel to the, the western shore um, in relation to the port itself, and you kind of dive down into this this growth of, of coral, again, very intricate in, in many different different colors, and there is a, a small hollow inside of it in which you're able to swim down, and you kind of over t- overturn this specific rock in which you know, you know, it's the signal. Uh, it's you know, a, a large carved stone in which you, were you to look at it in a pile of other rocks, would certainly stand out as being more hand worked and, and carved, basically. But in this hidden little burrow, you kind of orientate it in, in the specific direction in which to, to leave as a signal that a meeting should, needs to take place the following day. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping that I haven't, I haven't missed the, the Triton that would be scouting. Um, on that day who will see it and then will know to meet me the next day so I had I intend to swim back up and dry off and then head towards uh, the library to meet up with the girls that are studying and that's our show be sure to follow us on social media we're the Encourageable Par on Twitter Encourageable Party on Facebook and Instagram you can go to encourageableparty.com for additional world and NPC information and check out some of the merchandise there. Be the cool kid at your next game night by donning some Encourageable Party apparel. Encourageable Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Go to criticalhitdesign.com for your design needs. All ambient sounds and music are courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can contact him for your own musical inquiries via email at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring! Where, what happened? Where are we? Well, it looks like we're on an island. We must have we got away from everybody else and washed up on this deserted island. Oh my gosh, now what? What are we going to do? Is anybody going to save us? Uh, I don't know. I just appreciate you letting me up on that plank so I can float with you. As we learned in Titanic, two people can't fit on a plank. Or just two heads. Either way. Hey, I know one thing. I kind of need to mm, go. I, I, I see why I ain't doing too good with me. Oh my gosh, let's make sure the leaves are on your side. <laughs>